So we are into the fourth week, the final homily of our Advent series. And uh, if you remember, uh, many, many weeks ago now, uh, I gave uh, you all the opportunity to, to vote or to suggest uh, the top four topics you'd like me to preach on uh, during Advent. Uh, but many people come to me over a lot of time saying, Father, I wish you'd preach about this thing, or, you know, we need more help understanding that thing, whether it's um, an issue of the day, or if it's a, a matter of church teaching. And so I thought, okay, Advent's the perfect opportunity to say, well, the floor is yours. You vote, and I will preach in order of popularity of the quest. So on week one of Advent, I chose the fourth most popular topic that people uh, wanted me to speak about. And then on the second week of Advent, the third most popular. So third week of Advent, the second most popular. And today, we get to the most popular topic. Now, uh, the last three weeks have been very interesting and profound subjects that you've asked me to speak about, for example. Um, you know, what must I hope for? You know, how can I hope in this day and age? Very prevalent question, and a question that people have asked throughout the ages. Um, what is the experience of God? How can I have the experience of God? Profound question, and we dealt with that a little bit. Uh, and then a question over Christian lifestyle. How, what kind of lifestyle uh, can I live as a Christian in today's world? Really, you know, like deep stuff. So, what was our number one choice? Any, any, any thoughts? It must be so deep, right? It must be so, oh gosh. I'm going to tell you, the number one subject that you voted on, the most requests, was Kanye West. Anyway, so I'm just going to ask you a question, I'll give you the floor now. Um, how many people have heard of Kanye West? Hands up. Don't be shy, come on, let's, hear the, let's see those hands, every single one. That's nearly everybody, right? Every, everyone's heard of Kanye West. How could you not? Now, another question. I want honest hands up now. Who has listened to an album of Kanye West all the way through? So, not so many. So, it makes me wonder why this request was so popular. Well, I think it's because you've all heard of Kanye West, and he's been in the news most recently because he has become a super committed, all in, Christian. He's always been a Christian, he's been baptised, but now he is publicly saying that all of his music, all of his time, all of his art is turned over to proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord. He calls himself an evangelist, an apostle, and in fact his most recent album, which came out about three, four weeks ago, uh, is called Jesus is King. Do you know, it couldn't be a more public conversion, and it seems just going on your votes and in general, that it's captured our imagination. So I want to talk a bit about Kanye West and, and what that is all about. But I want to contrast him and actually find some similarities between him and the main subject of our gospel today, who is Saint Joseph. Okay, now what's the primary difference between Saint Joseph and Kanye West? I never thought in 2019, I'll be making this kind of comparison, by the way. Thank you. Uh, so, what's the, the primary difference between them two? Um, Kanye West has been on the scene for about 15, 16, 17 years. He's been doing it since early 2000. And everything we know about Kanye comes out of his own mouth. You know? His first big hit was called Jesus Walks, where he proclaimed his faith. And ever since then, we've been traveling with Kanye West as he's told us basically the story of his ups and downs through life, of his coming to faith, of his losing faith and what that meant for his music, um, often in very uh, rapper language, if you know what I mean, you know, swearing, demeaning women, all that kind of stuff, you know, until this point where he's actually got rid of it all and he's like, he's singing like an angel, do you know? It's all out there, okay? He said it, all that needs to be said. We know Kanye because he's spoken it himself. And then there's Joseph. Joseph is one of the only figures, personalities in the whole Bible, who never says a word. We have no saints in history who we don't have a single word from except Joseph. Joseph is anonymous. But Joseph we know because of his actions. Kanye by his words, his lyrics, Joseph by his actions. 
So and I think that's where another parallel comes in. As we look at Joseph's actions, look at Kanye West, publicly known for his mental health struggles. He has bipolar disorder, and he's very open about it. And it's actually liberated a lot of people to talk about mental health issues. Now you think, well, Joseph didn't have a mental health problem. Of course he didn't. But let's look at the story today and wonder if he could be, you know, considered with the same tar or tarred with the same brush as Kanye West. Joseph, a great man, even before the angel speaks to him. How do we know this? Because his wife has just come and told him that he's she pregnant. So he must be overjoyed, no? Who would be overjoyed? Our first child. But then she says, it's not yours. I wonder how he felt about that. Furious, no doubt. Heartbroken, no doubt. And then in the next breath she says, oh no, it's okay, because I've conceived this child by the Holy Spirit. It's from God. Can you imagine the look on Joseph's face? You know, first of all, you tell me you're pregnant, it's not mine. And then you try and lie to me and say, oh, it's the Holy Spirit who sent this child. Now, St. Joseph was a man of profound faith. He was the Lion of David. But what human being could hear this news and not be heartbroken? No? But what does he do? Unlike anyone else I think I've ever heard of, he doesn't react with anger and bitterness. He doesn't say a word. He acts. And his decision is to divorce Mary informally which means to do it in secret. His first action, no matter what's going on inside him, is to act in Mary's interests. He doesn't want her to be exposed to public shame, and he also doesn't want her to suffer the real consequence, the real punishment that could have befallen Mary in that day, which was stoning to death. She is bound to rights, guilty in the eyes of people, of adultery. And so to spare her shame, and to spare her publicity and potential stoning to death, Joseph undergoes the humiliation of divorcing her on the choir. What a man. And that's before he's had any revelation from an angel. That just comes from Joseph. What an amazing man. But then, step deeper into this. The night comes, he goes to sleep, and he has a dream. And in this dream, an angel appears to him. I've had angels that appear to me in my dreams. I've never woken up thinking I've had a revelation of God. I just thought, wow, that was a dream. You know? But in this dream, the angel comes to him and says, no, everything Mary says is true. This child shall be called Emmanuel. And so Joseph wakes up from that dream and he's changed. He takes a different course. He decides to stay with Mary and bring this child to term and to care for this child. Now, Imagine if someone had told you today, imagine if I told you, guys, I've, I've had a dream, okay? Uh, an angel told me uh, that we all need to start wearing bowler hats to mass. And, um, and so what do you think? You'd be like, okay, Father James, as you dial nine, 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 yeah? We've got a madman on the loose. That's how Joseph must have felt, no? He said, what is, what is happening to me? All of this stuff, is going on inside of you, quietly. But all we ever get to see, for all of that turmoil, are his actions. And his actions are Satan. He takes Mary into his home. He brings that child, well, she brings the child to turn. She brings that child into the world. He protects this child, Jesus, from death at the hands of Herod. And then he ensures that he is fed and clothed for all the years of his childhood, teaches him a trade. Jesus is known as the carpenter's son. The only reason, or the main practical reason, why Jesus is accessible to us today is because of Joseph and of his protective care. Mary gave birth to Jesus, but Joseph brought him to his ministry by his fatherhood. And he did this all in silence. In fact, we believe, because of scripture, because of our faith, that an angel really did appear to Joseph. Joseph didn't know. It was a dream. The reason these words are in scripture is because most likely at the end of his life, having seen the fruit of his suffering, the fruit of his humiliation, of his hard labour, he can go, God really did speak to me. 
My son truly is the son of God. Because, look, that's why it made it into scripture, I believe. That's why we have the story now. Because of Joseph's faithfulness and his willingness to endure all kinds of tribulation for the word of the Lord. And he did this all in silence. And now we have Kanye West. St. Joseph, the man of action. Kanye West in 2019, the man of words. The man who in his own way, through his artistic gifts and through his mental struggles, has received many, many revelations. And who is derided in public, you know, by people who wish to be his friends, as a madman. Who continues, in spite of this, to be creative. And in 2019 has culminated in proclaiming that Jesus Christ is King. It's a different kind of humiliation. Joseph's was interior. It was all his own. Kanye West is at the hand of all the public. And yet, their proclamation, whether by action or word, is the same. That Jesus is King. And I think we need both these styles of revelation in our lives. If we don't have actions, then our words have nothing to stand on. But if we don't have words, like if we didn't have the words of Scripture to testify to Joseph's life, we wouldn't know what actions to take. It's interesting, isn't it, that Jesus is called the Word of God. By his words and his life, we come to know the saving truth and love of our Heavenly Father. And so we need both in our lives. We need both kinds of teachings and we need to be thankful for both styles. Now, I'll be honest, uh, Kanye West is a Christian today, I'm going to see if he's a Christian next year. I'm, I'm, holding, I'm holding fire. But that doesn't mean that what is happening, this cultural phenomenon, isn't of value for us today. At the moment, I think still, I'm not sure, Kanye West is top of the American album charts, like the, the Billboard 100. He's top of the Christian uh, album charts, obviously, because that, you know, we, don't, we don't sell as many as Kanye West, except Edwin, he's going to outsell them. <laughs> he's top of the rap charts and the R&B, the first artist ever to dominate all arenas. And how's he doing it? With the name of Jesus. If you go on the tube now and listen to the music coming out of people's airpods or earphones, it's Jesus is King. Imagine the reach that that is having. God is doing something, and he's doing it through the most unlikely person, you know, in 2019, Kanye West. And we could be, I know it sounds funny, doesn't it? But we can be thankful for that. But we know, as Christians, as Catholics, that there will be no Kanye West, There'd be no Pat St. John Paul II. There'd be nothing. And there wouldn't even be, at least not in this mode, there wouldn't be a Jesus Christ without the silent action of Joseph in the background. Both men, both witnesses proclaiming the same thing, that Jesus is king. Amen. <laughs>